What would you do if it was a zombie apocalypse? I'm not sure, but I certainly wouldn't sing. Is there anything scarier than a musical? No. What did you get me for Christmas? Nice try. All this and more on Gory Storytime. Warning. Gory Storytime is a horror movie review show by a son and his dad who thought that letting his five-year-old watch scary movies was acceptable. If you are offended by horror or talk about blood and gore by a child, or if you don't want horror movies from the 60s through today spoiled, then there is a remote stuck in your couch cushion next to potato chip crumbs. Use it. And of course, parental discretion is advised. Why? You didn't use any. Shut up and start the show. Welcome to Gory Story Time. I'm your host, Jason. I'm his co-host and his father, Craig. And uh, this is our final episode of the year. It is. Um, the studio that we use, they closed down uh, before the day of the week that we... They're open next week, but not the day that we have available. So uh, this will be the final one for the year. And because we didn't have time to do four of something and finish out the year that way we just we always try to do a christmas movie we did one last week our hope was to do the mean one this week unfortunately the mean one was supposed to start streaming last night for free everywhere that was the original release plan and they pulled back on that and we and, don't know and where it's going to apparently not releasing it yeah there's no info as to where to find it currently so unfortunately that happens, I guess. So, just as a backup, because we found there was a local theater that was going to carry it and we were going to watch it. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Um, so, we watched another one just as a backup and we hadn't seen it before. Anna and the Apocalypse. Yes. Let's discuss basically what it is. It's a comedy, horror, zombie, musical and that's a, yeah, that's Slapped all Slapped wonderfully with a rated R. Oh, yeah, and it's definitely R-rated. Um, it's like, what if High School Musical took place over Christmas vacation? In England. In England, and... The zombie apocalypse There's a zombie starts. apocalypse that the main characters don't notice, kind of like Shaun of the Dead, which we commented at the time. Yes. And that'll come up in the facts, too. Yes. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, basically it's these kids in high school singing while fighting zombies and trying to run for their lives and save family members and celebrate Christmas. And well, they don't really celebrate Christmas. It just happens to be during Christmas. So there's a lot of Christmas imagery in even the and, weapons and, that and they choose. Sweatshirts, uh, yes. sweaters and, and displays and such. But anyway, um, that's basically the premise. Uh, yes. It's a wild premise, so if you don't like musicals, which I don't... I mean, much like last week, if if you're in with the premise, that's then it's exactly. great for you. Now, I don't like musicals, but like what I was about to say, this one's not bad because it's funny. I don't mind humor. They were definitely parody, parodying the uh, high school musical style. Yes. Just with R-rated stuff. Indeed. All right, um... But that's enough blathering about what it is. Why don't we show you a trailer and then you can see for yourself. Further updates. Reports of mass infection with the as yet unidentified virus continue to come in from across the world. Hey guys. Have a good morning. Sure, it'll be the same as always. Can you hear me? I'm a first aider. New morning. Feels different than before. There's zombies. Not zombies. Oh, right, because that's perfectly normal. I'm ready. Hey, zombies, right? It's crazy. I know. 
We are not opening the doors. My little girls out there. I'm getting my dad, all right? How are we gonna get past all the zombies? I just had the best idea ever. This is the stupidest idea ever. All right, losers. The streets are chaos and the outlook is dire. What do I do? Light the movie! Destroy the place! We go through here, we might make it to the school before sundown. Plus, it'll be fun. Yeah, certain death is so much fun. <gasps> this isn't fun anymore. Hashtag evac selfie. Well, we all deserve to go extinct. All right. Pretty decent trailer. Gave the. Yeah, it didn't point. look like it gave much away. But it, the point, yeah. which is because this is definitely one of those premises where if you're not in on that it's a comedy, a musical, and a zombie movie all at once, if you're not in, you're not going to enjoy this. Yeah, that's the difference between this and Shaun of the Dead is it's a musical instead of a romance, right? And they tried to put a little romance in, but Shaun of the Dead did that way better. And didn't do the musical thing. No, they did the comedy. They did a straight-up zombie. But, well, let's, we've already discussed that. Go back and find that episode. That one's a great episode because it was a great movie. Oh, and it wasn't a Christmas movie, so definitely no. not what we're talking about. Definitely not. Um, but before... We get into the behind-the-scenes information and all that stuff and talk about our opinions on favorite scenes and whatever. Um, we need to give a shout-out to our sponsors. Because as you can tell by the fact that we consistently wear uh, the same five T-shirts each. Yeah. And, like, two hats for me, maybe three for you because you got the Santa one. Um, obviously, we're rolling in the dough. Uh Actually, I mean, actually, some yeah. Rich people like anyway, but um, well, you're not even in the bakery where you work, so you don't roll in the dough. You cut meat. <laughs> Which makes me much more dangerous. Ah, uh, yes, his hands are registered weapons. You're dumb. Um, but this week, our uh, big paychecks are coming in from these actual things that really exist and you can purchase. <clears throat> Gory Story Time is brought to you by Murderous Music, a series of soundtracks to musicals we wish existed based on our favorite horror movies. Our composers, musicians, and singers created 12 to 14 songs per musical. We also have a compilation that includes one song from each of the 20 fake musicals we've created so far, including such hits as Sleep Well, Springwood from the Nightmare on Elm Street musical to We Call Em Baldies from the Sleepaway Camp musical. Not intended for children. Murderous music. It's better to sing your heart out than have it cut out. And by Happy Horror Days, the first Christmas horror cookbook from GSD Publishing. Try our gory yet delicious recipes from Spiral from the Book of Saw Ham, Victor Crowley's Scalped Potatoes. Scalped, not scalloped. Uh, Freddy's Old Fashioned How Sweet Mince Meat Pie. And, of course, George Romero's Night of the Living Dead Nog. Happy Horror Days. Disgust and delight your family with this Axmas. This Axmas, yes. All right. Um, now we're going to get into the... Meat and beef of the show. That's correct. Or as I like to call it, the meat and beef of the show. We should just make red wristbands that just say meat and beef with no explanation. Maybe like the initials GST on the other side. It's a good idea. Vegans would hate that though. And we're not trying to offend vegans, at least on this show. <laughs> Dang it. I mean, oh, <laughs> no. you're right. Um, all right. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Uh, you usually do, but Sure, it's... I will. All right. Uh, the film closes with a dedication to Ryan McHenry. McHenry, who sadly passed away in 2015, wrote and directed the short film Zombie Musical from which this feature film was adapted. One of the posts that was seen in the 
Avac selfie, hashtag Avac selfie bit was someone named Ash Campbell, which is a mashup of Ash Williams and Bruce Campbell, who played Ash Williams, from the Evil Dead franchise. Uh, during the scene when Lisa sings her song at the school's Christmas concert, the man seen playing keyboard is Tommy Riley, who co-wrote the music for the film. This movie has three versions. The USA cut, which is 93 minutes long. The UK international cut, which is 98 minutes long. And the festival cut at 108 minutes. Hmm. Uh, in the original cut of the film, there, were, there was a song called Which Side Are You On? performed by school principal Savage and Tony and his dad. However, the song was cut from all theatrical releases and pre previous home releases on DVD to do pacing and to focus on the main group of kids. The song was reinstated in the extended version Blu-ray released by Second Sight Films. The movie was planned to have a full musical opening scene featuring a drunk Santa stumbling through the town center while people around him sung What a Time to Be Alive. This would also feature several minor characters before they're infected. However, the scene was canceled halfway through shooting due to poor weather. That's too bad, because that would have been funny. And a good uh, way to start it. The shots of them walking through the shopping center in town, uh, town square, were filmed at the abandoned Freeport shopping village just outside Livingston, Scotland. The snow angel scene that in the play park was filmed on location in Port Glasgow, Scotland in the middle of winter using fake snow. Many in the cast, including its stars, saw the film for the first time at the film's premiere at Fantastic Fest in Austin, Texas. The cleaner in the bowling alley is called Mrs. Hintzman to def a definite nod to Bill Hintzman, who played the graveyard zombie that kills Johnny in the original Night of the Living Dead. Hmm. Uh, the school that Anna and her colleagues attend was filmed at the recent demolished St. Stephen's uh, High School in Inverclyde, Scotland. It, as you had said, it uh, debuted at Fantastic Fest in Austin, Texas. That was September 22nd, 2017. So it's not that old a movie. Five years? Um, social, the social media media evac selfie scene features the film art film's art director martin kelly posing in front of a caged zombie american actor tyler collins who starred in director john mcphail's previous film where do we go from here has a brief uncredited non-speaking role as a zombie during the scene when the undead attack the bowling alley hmm. director john mcphail uh, said that Anna and the Apocalypse was influenced by the film's West Side Story, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and The Breakfast Club, as well as the Buffy the Vampire Slayer musical episode, One More with Feeling, or Once, Once More with Feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, McPhail also said that the film includes nods to the zombie films Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, The Evil Dead, The Happiness of the Katu Katakuris, and Shaun of the Dead. The crop tops and short shorts seen in the film were inspired by the costume design in the slasher film Sleepaway Camp. So it took a lot of inspiration from a lot of places. The director's cut of Anna and the Apocalypse features an all new song to its soundtrack. It's the longest version out of the three by nine minutes. The new mostly unheard song is about Arthur Savage, the vice principal who wants nothing but the worst for his students. In the song, the characters have come to the realization he's far more evil than they previously believed. In this version, these events happen well before there's a major reveal about Savage or the final face-off. The addition of this song brings a much darker tone to the movie, which may have resulted in the final decision to leave it out of the theatrical release. Uh, the hula girl ornament in Anna's dad's car can be seen in another Scottish film called Beats, where the, car, uh, where the same car was used. Filmed in Port Glasgow, Scotland. I think we talked about that. Yeah. Times. On the 5th of October in 2017, the film held its European premiere at Sitges, Sitges Film Festival in Catalonia, Spain. Ah. Uh, Brian Lanano or whatever was at one point considered to direct. I don't know who that is, but... Hey, when you're looking for facts on the internet, sometimes it's not facts that you know what that means. I don't know who he is. I'd have to look it up. Now, 
if you remember last week, the two people who watched this, if you remember, or three, because I have a buddy, Josh, that watches now, too. Um, one of my older friends, like longtime friends. But anyway, I'm not calling him old. No, you're calling you old. Well, sure. That's true. But anywho, um, last week, he got mad when it was time to do the Rotten Tomatoes scores. The Rotten to because what happens is, we always explain, Rotten Tomatoes doesn't give a score to a movie. What they do is they take all the critics that they accept as real critics that have reviewed it, they and boil it down to positive and negative, and then they just tell, tell you, you the, the percentage positive of the positive reviews. Yes. Um, last week, and we also tell you that the people can go on the website and do the same, and they have a number for that. He always does the critics. Last week, he insisted he doesn't do the critics. You can go back and watch it, and it's very funny knowing that he argued, especially today when he wanted to prove that he was right last week because he was supposed to do the critics. And I was like, you were supposed to do the critics, and I forced right. you to do it, and you were mad at me. And he... No. He yes, argued I was to for do the, the people, right? But you insisted on doing the people last week. He, before the show, he went onto YouTube, went back to that episode, heard himself say what he's arguing against right now, and still says I'm wrong. I always before do the people. The he always does the week, critic. I I always double check. And if I had messed it up, it was you you that made you that mess up happen. No, I always do. No, every didn't. single time. He's a damn liar. Go back and watch last week. I argued with him that he was wrong last week. And if you had checked with me, you would have brought it up last week. But anyway, what do the friggin' critics have for a score? That's the one you're supposed to do. What 77%. Is it? Okay. The people have it at 63, which is odd because like we like to point out, usually if it's horror or comedy, especially if it's horror comedy, it tends to get a higher number from the people usually they get a rougher time from the uh critics that being said the last few it seems like the critics were smarter than the, the people. people yeah because this is definitely not a 63 percent film in my opinion no um anyway what would you say your least favorite knowing that we liked least it i try to favorite. go with the opposite of if we like it, I try to go with the least favorite. And if we didn't like it, I go with the favorite scene just to make it harder first. What was your least favorite part? I mean, probably the fact that there were a couple of the characters where it's like, okay, I could believe that that character is singing. All right. Okay. And that so many others, you could tell, were very poorly Lip syncing. And the thing is, it's not even just that because I don't, like, you could tell that it wasn't that person singing. Right. Because there are people that ha can't lip sync to themselves. There are bands that have videos where they avoid showing the singer's mouth because somehow the singer doesn't match up with the song, even though of he sang himself. the song or she sang the song. It happens. It really does. Um, and it's like, oh, how do you not know? But it's know? like you can tell that that voice isn't coming from yeah, that person. which makes it worse. So I, I, I agree with you on that. That's not what my least favorite thing is. I'm going to say is the character of the leader of the gang of toughs, I guess they would call it over in England. Yes. He was such a I wanted to punch him in the face person the whole time. It's the character he was playing. But, like, I, I just... Yeah. They could have had him be a jerk and have it work without him being the kind of jerk he was. Like, it it wasn't, like, the kind that works for me. It actually took away from the movie yeah. for me. Um, so this isn't Like, if you I had actually, replaced him with a different bully, it probably could have worked better. Yeah. Um, just, they went places that I didn't think it should have. I'll yes. That way. Um, what was your favorite scene, though? All right, so there was a scene where her and the guy that, like, was in love with her or whatever, I don't remember his name, they're both coming out of their homes to meet up, singing this very 
cheesy musical song because that was the point. Yes. And the whole world's falling apart around them, and Zombies they're dancing, and, and they're singing, and it is like almost shot for shot, it seems, a direct homage of Shot of the Dead. And I, as someone who loved that movie... With music. ...thought that that was hilarious. Okay. And I liked that they were singing the same song, because that's always ridiculous in those things. Two people nowhere near each other just break into the same song and happen to meet up and sing it yep. as a duet when they and then come together. And then mid-song, Zombie shows up, and they're like, I'm not going to say the character, but my mm. least favorite part. Your or no, favorite part. Oh, I forgot that. I just thought of a second least favorite. Never mind. <laughs> Ouch. I know. Well, I'll tell you off air. But I, I still like the one I picked more. Um, okay, my favorite part. Okay. Um, the fact that I hate musicals and this, we were like, I started, I had a startled laugh come out of me from one yep. line. And it, we literally like had to pause it because we were both laughing so hard. Um, a handful of times. A handful of times. But like we had to stop once. And it's a specific line in a specific song. And I'm not going to spoil that. But because then you ruin the punchline for people and I don't want to do that. But I will tell you there was one line that it just hit me. Hit you right on the tip exactly. of the funny bone. Exactly. Like, like, like if there was a bullseye to my funny bone, it was a bullseye. Oh, yeah. It was the kind of bullseye that like Robin Hood put an arrow through an arrow that was already a bullseye. Like, yeah. And like peeled the arrow. Yes. It's, like, it's it was that. that. It was dead precise. on specific and precise is not specise. specific it was that precise that precise anyway don't mind me i'm tripping over my own lips yes <laughs> <laughs> um on a scale of 1 to 10 1 being how you, dumb you feel right now because of last week's mess up 10 being with the huh <laughs> Ten I'm being silly, he something thinks I feel I, dumb. He silly, he to. thinks I feel about that situation. Yeah, because he still denies that situation. Go back and watch the other one. See what happens. <laughs> yeah, he, see, he's you telling you not watch, to. For no, you can't watch the before the episode aired when I talked to him off the air. So nobody can corroborate it except for me with my memory. Except if you watch the episode, mm -hmm. and it's up. So. Yeah, I mean... If you're watching this, you can definitely go see it on YouTube. Uh, it's been doctored. Nothing's real. On a scale of 1 to 10. 8. I'm going to go 7.5. Because of the things that I say detracted for it for me. And I think catchier tunes would have been better. Yes. Because it was definitely trying to do a High School Musical kind of thing, but High School Musical 1 had a couple songs that were actually catchy and annoying. Well, it's, maybe. It's more I don't like any of them. They more hit the level of two or three, where it wasn't quite as catchy. Well, maybe that's what they were going for. Maybe they no. were looking to make fun of the yes, worst ones. What, what they wanted to do was parody less popular things. Sure. Um, no. Well, now that you understand... But uh, anyway, so eight, I say? seven and a half. Yeah, still like I mean, definitely watch if you're in with the premise. Like, it's worth your time. It's not as good as the one we reviewed last week, where it hit 100 percent exactly. Like what this it needed isn't to. necessarily going to be an every year rewatch. No, but I could watch this again. one like again. Yeah, this won't be the only time we see it. No. Um. There's stuff on the side of the screen that I usually read. Yeah. There it is. So you can watch this show on Fact TV Channel 1076 on Thursdays at, Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. and Fridays at 7 p.m. You can also like us on fa Facebook. And on like Facebook. I, yes, and like I always say, um, it's not just Gory Story Time, which, yes, please like that, but also Fact TV, who produces the show. Uh, you get to see like live streams of stuff that they have. And there's a lot of content that gets made locally and – I'm kind of proud to be part of that for so oh, many yeah. years. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can go to factdate.com and watch a bunch of the back episodes of this as well as a lot of the other uh, entertainment that we were just speaking of. You can check us out on Twitter. I'm at Craig Jakes, all one word, all lowercase. 
and I'm at Jiggly Firm Brain. It is a an account dedicated solely to apparently trying to get myself banned or something. I don't know. It's just <laughs> stuff that he says, and you know how that could go. And it's usually out of context, but sometimes in context if it makes it funnier. Yes. Um, it tends to be out of context more often. M- much more often. Because usually that is the funnier version. Also, check it. Gory Story Time on YouTube. Like, subscribe, hit the Smash notification bell. Smash that like bell. button. Uh, Share it with all your friends. Make and, us millionaires. And if you look for Gory Story Time, it'll show my channel, but it'll also bring you to episodes that are on Fact TV's channel. And like and subscribe to those too. And if your like boyfriend's best friend's cousin in law's roommate is a horror movie like director or something, send this to him. Yeah, sure. And until next time, I've been your host, Jason. I'm his co-host and father, Craig. And Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas. And sweet dreams.